talking technique, no trouble, this is sorry. In this improv, in the beginning, you heard me play a little bit with uh, a chromatic idea that essentially was circled around the following root. And then going from the 9 to the root, then to the 5, then again to the 9 to the root. So this poses a technical challenge because essentially I'm string crossing over over three strings. String crossing means you are going from one string to the next on the same fret. So we have had several talking techniques dedicated to string crossing in various variations. This is a really good exercise, for example, uh, but there are others. Um, but you, you kind of have to, you can't really get around string crossing at this spot. You could, of course, you know, whenever you have a string crossing scenario, use two fingers or even three. But in this case, this doesn't really work because of the way you get to it and the way you need to get out of it because you need to get down. So that's not going to work at a certain tempo. So uh, we can isolate this and take it a couple of ways of uh, how to look at this. There are a couple of different ways how you can approach this lick fingering wise. So one way, chromatic from the 9 to the root, 5 through string crossing, and then I go to the 3rd finger or to the 4th finger. and. Um, that makes me go back to the root, so, or, another fingering possibility is this one, you go to the ninth with your pinky, and then you string cross with the second finger, so on the other version, you're string crossing with the first, and then go to the third, or to the fourth, in this version, pinky, string crossing with the second finger and then go to the third finger or to the pinky if you want. You cannot cross all three strings with one finger in this leg because then how you're going to get down there. So at a certain tempo you're going to have a hard time shuffling your fingers around. So either this or meaning string crossing over with the first finger or with the second finger, depending how you get there. If you have a hard time working on this up to tempo because it is... It's a bear. <laughs> so um, to, uh, one way you can work on it is, is to skip the string in the middle, just as an exercise to get there. In essence, doing this. And I'm going uh, to chord changes wise, I was going to the one, six, four, five. By the way, you can make your own variations on beat four, how you, that's beat four, right? How you lead back into the one uh, up to you with a chromatic run or however you would like to do that. You can also play the fifth here, but it makes it harder when you stay on the root actually, because then you have less time for that jump up to the ninth. We took out a note, now let's put it back in. That one, the fifth. It's not a bad idea to isolate just those three notes, because that's a tough spot. Or this, depending on which fingering you want to use. Or this. Or this. See all these different options, right? So pick one and play those through the changes. You 
playing the root, the fifth below, and the ninth. Now with that practice under your belt, you can try the whole piece. This is tempo 70. With various fingerings. I'll start with the three. <laughs> Four, four short bars, but they can help you put the string crossing exercises to good use. It's a quick review, a couple of string exercises you can do are these things. People often ask me, should, should I bar, like keep them both down, you know? Well, this has its uses for, you know, things like that. Uh, I would not do that for a string crossing exercise like that because you're gonna have a hard time to mute it, you know. You could mute it with your right hand, but it, it's faster if you do that with your left. And then you can also s skip a string. You know? Skip two if you want. So plenty of exercises for your string crossing. And the idea is, you know, you, you want to get yourself used to one finger per fret. That is what I always recommend because it gives you, in my view, the fastest access without many shifts. And you have four fingers. Why not use them? You know, some people who don't like to stretch uh, their fingers apart or have a hard time in the beginning. I was taught, there's plenty of talking techniques that you can find where I talk at length about the basic setup. Let's talk about the right hand here for a second. Now my goal is to always alternate. And even though we are string crossing a whole bunch here, I don't want to do this. Probably the most tempting would be to connect the first two and then Luck again with a different finger. I want them all to be dependent because if I, um, if I see everything you do going up, if I reverse the direction here, right? I have to index middle, index middle. I have to alternate. So the same dynamic is already in my hand because going up, I wouldn't even think about breaking. Right? Breaking B using one of the same finger uh, over two strings. So I recommend to work on that independent. So while you're at it, might as well go M I M I M I M I or I M I M I M I M. It doesn't matter which finger you start with. M I M I M I M or I M I M I M I. It doesn't matter which one you start with, but stay consistent. That is a great opportunity to practice that. I hope you have enjoyed this episode. I'm at respaceblog.com. Books out, courses out, lots of new material coming. So please do visit, subscribe to my blog at respaceblog.com to be in the know. We have lots of stuff coming. Cheers. Thanks for watching.